Midwest Digital News. I'm Kevin Hunter with Chris Bornstead and Kyle Torgerson on this fine Friday. It is May the 18th, and Kyle, start us off with a good weather report. Good weather. Okay. So today it looks like it'll be a high of 69 with a low of 51. It will be cloudy. Um, you can expect um, some cloudy weather, but it's mo there's going to be some sun. And it looks like it'll be in the high 60s, mid 70s, and Tuesday reaching a high of 81. That's awesome. I see why, that sun. Why, why does it have to be on Tuesday or Wednesday? Why can't it be Saturday and Sunday? I'd love for it to be in Saturday. Oh, come on. Every day is Saturday and Sunday, isn't it? <sighs> Yeah. Yeah, that's that positive mindset, Chris. You know, <clears throat> everything everything is the weekend. T G I D for me. Tomorrow's gonna be crazy <laughs> weekend for me. They got the girls run tomorrow over here at the lake that all the kids have been uh preparing all been for. Setting up yeah, for it. yeah, my daughter's gonna be running in that. Yeah. Then we've got baseball, closing ceremonies. You know, it would have been nice to have that kind of weather. You know, well, hey, the weather that whatever. we'll have will be <laughs> nice. Well, we're delighted to have Jody Summers join us out of Northern California. She's our news contributor in the health area. Thanks, Jody, for joining us here on Northwest Judicial News, as always. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about quality proteins. What can you share with us about what? quality proteins and the, and the types of proteins? Because there, last week we had conversation about good carbs. Um, good quality carbs versus poor quality carbs. And what can you tell us about good quality protein? Absolutely. Well, because we've done, this is the third fats and carbs and um, now the proteins. The, again, going back to about 30% of our diet should be protein. And that should be fairly consistent unless you're a high endurance athlete or recovering from surgery, or there's a medical reason why you would need a whole lot more. Um, that stays about consistent with everybody. And so that 30%, the higher quality, the better, obviously, um, because protein heals the body and is necessary for building and repairing and all sorts of really important things. And so we want to have that be, you know, as, as, as good as we can. So some good choices, um, for protein would be, well, I, I actually made a little list. And so I put my very favorite at the top, which is bone broth. Um, I'm not a huge meat eater. And, and you know, you always hear people who are vegetarians or vegans or whatever, you know, how do they get their protein? Well, there's a lot of options. Um, but for those of us, for people who are big meat eaters, you know, a, a good grass fed beef, um, pasture chicken, you know, wild caught fish, those are all amazing choices. Um, and then for people who um, maybe don't like meat as much, um, a bone broth is, is my personal favorite because it's really got a lot of that good quality protein in it, but it's really easy to digest. And so if, if people are recovering from a surgery or they have trouble digesting, a, a good bone broth is a really good way to get healthy fats and good quality protein in a really digestible form. Um, but going back to the beef, the chicken and the fish, when we're talking about high quality, what you wanna look for is, it's not just beef, chicken and fish because the vast majority are, are either, you know, industrial raised or chickens that are raised in a big, inside pen they're never outside or fish that are farmed and if you're looking at these these beef if you i live in california and so when i travel i go up and down um, highway five and there's big industrial farms on both sides and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of heads of cattle that are all smushed together and it's it's sad it smells it's not how animals should be treated um, and what happens with those animals is that even though there's beef and it looks pretty, they were raised on grains. And the grains that those beef were raised on actually cause inflammation in their body because they're not supposed to eat it um, at the amounts that they do, especially. And then the, uh, that inflammatory beef then is cooked into food that we eat. And so, you know, over some of this time, we've been talking about inflammation and and so if we're looking for a really healthy and high quality beef, you want to do a grass fed organic, you know, from your local farmer that, you know, treats that animal well, that has a better life. 
that animal then in turn has a lower inflammatory body and that's what we're eating. Mm -hmm. So the same then would be true with chickens um, who are able to be outside if possible, um, you know, in a big moving pen, you know, where they may be in one area um, one day, another area another day, and they get sunshine because it's better for their bodies. Therefore, the quality is better. And then lastly, um, it took me even a while to figure this out because I was talking about farm fish that what difference to make if they're, you know, living in a in caged area swimming or they're swimming in the ocean. But it honestly, I didn't know until a few years ago that when they live in an encaged area, they eat grains. Well, fish aren't supposed to eat grains. They're supposed to eat fish stuff that they eat like in the wild. And so again, these fish that are farm raised are very inflammatory. And so if you're looking for healthy, high quality protein, make sure they're grass fed, pastured or wild caught. So I'll get off my soapbox there, but so important. Those are great distinctions because a lot of people think of fish and just fish in general as being a healthy uh, form of protein. And so I, that, that's, a, that's a really great distinction to create because I've actually been to some of these fish farms. It's like really interesting. I don't know if you've seen like, uh, the only thing that I can think to compare it to, um, if you've ever been like in a pet store or one of these places where they have like just a way overpopulated tank with goldfish or something like that in it, these fish farms uh, make those kind of fish tanks look like they're empty in comparison. Because it's just like, it's almost like you wouldn't sink to the bottom because it's just like solid fish in the water below you. It's pretty crazy how concentrated it really is. And when you mentioned about them being fed grains, um, I've actually been present when people have gone out to fish, to feed these fish, these, and they're throwing pellets like right out into the water uh, for them. And it's, and when you see like the churning of the water and all these fish, you know, grabbing these pellets, it's like, yeah, that doesn't seem like a really good fish for eating purposes. Right. And, and again, just the higher quality is going to come from um, the wild caught. And you want to make sure that it says that on there because there are some different marketing terms that, you know, companies lead people to believe, you know, they're why I think. I think one of them, and don't quote me on this exactly, but I think one of them says like wild farms. Well, that doesn't mean that they were caught in the wild. So you want to look for the words wild caught, which means they lived their life. Now, some of those may have actually started in a fish type um, hatchery when they're tiny, tiny, and they kind of do, you know, salmon especially, you know, they and then they let them out in the wild and they, okay, that that's fine. But um, what you don't want is to live their whole life just in those little enclosed. Again, they just cause, you know, inflammatory. You're just eating, you know, food that isn't. The other thing, too, is when you're looking at eggs, which um, are an amazing source of protein, mm -hmm. you want to have um, eggs that are the, the darker the yolk, the better. I mean, like orange is better than pale yellow. In my growing up years, my mom bought the eggs at the grocery store. And then um, when we had children and we had chickens, I knew nothing about raising chickens. That could be a whole story in itself. But when they start, when I opened them up, I thought, oh, my gosh, they're so bright colored. That's the way they're supposed to be because they live in, you know, a pen and then they went outside and um, they're not supposed to be peeled. So the darker they are, the, the more nutrient dense they are. You know, uh, this is a little bit off topic, but a lot of people are not aware, too, that with a farm fresh egg, they have a enzyme on them that protects them from rotting or, or going bad. And we think about, you know, eggs that if they're not refrigerated, it's going to be a bad egg. And here was a, actually a, a true to life story that happened because, you know, we have our own free range chickens at home and um not long ago, one of the neighbors comes over and says, hey, I think I know where one of your chickens has been stashing eggs. And she goes over to the neighbor's place to check and the chicken had, but you would hear this chicken proclaiming because when they lay eggs, they let you know. And, oh. and you could hear this chicken proclaiming somewhere in the neighborhood. So it was leaving our property and going next door. And so the neighbor says, you got to come check this out. And there's 20 eggs 
stashed in this little place where she'd been laying these eggs. And she's looking at, you know, based on the time and how many eggs they would lay in a week's time and whatever. And she goes, there's at least a couple weeks worth of eggs here. Takes them home, does the float test on all of them. They're all perfect. Um, they, they've all been now consumed for meals. But I can tell you that they were absolutely delicious eggs, even sitting outdoors for some of them probably a few weeks. So pretty cool. Um, um, go yeah. ahead. Well, I had a little list of things that I would have less quality protein. Um, yep. yep. Again, the meat from industrial farming, chicken eggs from caged birds, farmed fish. And on this list are two things that I actually put on the list on purpose. And the first one are protein powders um, and protein bars, you know, things that are marketed to us as protein. Now, are there time and place for protein bar and protein powder? There, there are. I mean, they're, you know, if you're traveling, those are fabulous. But on an everyday basis, we've been led to believe that protein powders replace food and protein powders are pro highly processed they're just highly processed they're, they're refined and 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 there are some that are better than others but in general you want to get the highest quality protein if you're looking at those really high quality from real food not necessarily from a protein powder that's been packaged in a box and marketed on a website Mm -hmm. um, and the other one too, and, and I say this because I work with a lot of people who, a lot of women, especially with breast cancer, um, is tofu. And there's some questions on, you know, for some people, tofu is fabulous. Now, the drawback with tofu is that about, mm, there's a, a very high percentage in the United States that is genetically modified and sprayed with glyphosate, um, which is never good. And then, but there is some question on estrogen dominance cancer, especially if, if somebody has estrogen dominance or breast cancer, I would always stay on the side of being conservative and not consume um, soy or tofu products. I'm glad that you mentioned the powdered protein uh, that is in a lot of shakes. There's a lot of companies out there that put out shakes that are very clearly meal replacement and people that are using them are using them every single day. Um, and the old protein bars. And, and you're right that it would make a lot more sense to be eating a protein bar or having a protein shake if you're traveling and you can't have, you know, a, a fresh source, like you mentioned, grass-fed beef, you know, a free-range chicken, yes. a wild-caught salmon, et cetera. Um, and, and so there's a lot of other more poor choices you could make, but to be consuming those kinds of protein powders every single day is just... And, and where they're the most prevalent is actually in the fitness industry. That's interesting to me. Now, now, again, you know, it's a very general statement because if somebody is doing now my little class I took on the step today, I don't need extra protein for the little class I attended. Mm -hmm. But if you're a really heavy duty weightlifter, you are you might need more than that 30 percent. And that might be really good. So I'm not making I'm not saying across the board protein powder shouldn't be consumed. But I'm just saying that there are better quality for everyday use. Even when you travel, one of the things that I love is just a little thing of um, of wild caught sardines. Healthy mm -hmm. fats, good protein, easy to carry. Rip the top off. You know, we're good. So, well, that's awesome and enlightening as always, Jody. And you had a question for Jody, right? On bacon. Yeah. Is there good good bacon and bad bacon? What's your what's your thoughts with regard to bacon? If it's this is gonna um, be bad, I can't listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Um, you know, in in the right quantity, some people I think have overdone it in the last few years with the bacon and butter thing, but in the right quantities, you wanna make sure that it is nitrate and nitrite free. Because that's the part when you look at um, the curing and the way that it's treated afterwards that um is really the, the kind of the question apart when it comes to health so again if you're going to eat bacon you know choose and i think trader joe's has one i think whole foods has one you know probably some of the good grocery stores has some nitrite and nitrate free bacon um but yeah there and again there i would consider that more of a fat than a protein just because of the the makeup of 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 bacon um i, I would agree 
I can I can say from personal experience too because uh, when my wife gets bacon, she always chooses the best possible quality that she can get. And interestingly, because it's not full of all these other things that you might find in you know some off the shelf packaged bacon, you end up putting a lot of your own seasonings and flavorings into it because if you cook it just like it is in its natural state, you'd be surprised at how much less flavor there is in this bacon that's the good bacon than there is all these other packages you get off the shelf. So I remember yeah. the first time she and, made and this it, really high quality little, bacon. Yeah. I was like, wow, uh, that didn't taste like bacon. When we're looking at bacon, again, because it's such a high fat content, remember that if it is um, uh, organic, it's far better because pesticides and toxins actually concentrate in fat. And yeah. so you want to make sure that, again, especially with bacon, that you're getting a high quality because there's so much fat in there. Um, so that would be my, you know, my word of, of caution is just that it's a very high quality product. Well, uh, Jody, we're going to leave it there for well, today. I, I do have a question. Oh, you got a question. Go ahead. Now, how do you feel about the drink Soylent? Do you know much about Soylent? Mm, don't know. What is it? Is it? Never even heard of it. Soy it's basically lint? a uh, drink in a bottle. Soy lint. It's uh, one word. And it's basically like a meal in a bottle. And um, a lot of millennials are drinking nothing but it. And that comes in. Um, so that's what's wrong with millennials. It comes in cocoa. <laughs> no, co no, there's original flavor. But they also have cafe, which is chai and coffee and vanilla. <clears throat> if you want to be, you know, drinking coffee. Okay. I, I'm making, I'm making a, um, I'm giving my opinion on something I don't know. But based on the name, soy, and, and that it's a process of soy, soy yeah, those two things, again, just from what you said, it sounds like a very highly processed, almost not even like a food. Um, it's a food like product and it's soy. So we're looking at two things that, again, if you're looking at healthy proteins and high quality, that would not be on my list soy nor highly processed. So, again, I, I don't know. I'm not familiar with the product, but from the description, that would be my answer. I'm seeing it on the other screen over here, Jody, and you hit the nail on the head without seeing the product. I can tell you that. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thanks, Jody, for, for joining us, and I look forward to having our conversation down the road. I'm not going to tip off our audience what we're going to present because they're going to love to see the results of what we put together here on a show coming up down the road so uh take care enjoy your granddaughter grandbaby next week so you won't be mm -hmm. with us next week but we'll be talking again the uh following friday and uh as always thanks for joining us here on northwest digital news thanks well have a great day you, you too. too bye all right gentlemen we have a round table friday and there is so much to talk about here with round table friday today so much so many too where many. do we want to start I say MS MS thirteen. Let's talk about MS thirteen. Yes. Since so, nobody said anything. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's go. Jump right MS into it. MS thirteen. Yes. So a uh, little uh, backstory to this: Donald Trump made a comment at a recent pest uh, <laughs> pest <laughs> conference. It is kind of a pest conference, isn't it? Kind of. <laughs> if you it, consider the media the pests. <laughs> Well, I guess if you have media sitting there who's not necessarily looking for truth, that's they're kind of pests, and, aren't and they? And they're kind of hostile. And they're kind of hostile. Right, they, yeah. They'd be kind of pests. Yes. Then, yes right. Yes, yeah. Well, in this case, it turns out it, it, it was a pest conference mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he was answering a question I for a sheriff that deputy. Right now, pest conference. Pest conference. That's ours. That's ours. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So there's a pest conference going on, and uh, <clears throat> he was uh, he was questioned. It was a round table situation going on, and he was questioned um, with regard to it was uh, in response to regard to these MS13 gang members, and uh, we're gonna one of the guys who has actually done a a fantastic job in media, really on both sides of the aisle. Is a gentleman by the name of Ben Shapiro. We're going to allow Ben here to give you a little backstory, and then we'll share with you some of the comments that come from the likes of, well, Nancy Pelosi and maybe others. So let's uh, share the video from Ben Shapiro. 
I really not bothered that day. President from this year was the senior that the first sheriff in all of the country. And one of the sheriffs mentioned the MS-13, and President Trump responded in this way. And here's clip three. The country are trying to come in. We're stopping a lot of them. But we're taking people out of the country. You wouldn't believe how bad these people are. These aren't people. These are animals. And we're taking them out of the country at a level and at a rate that's never happened before. Okay, so here is the reality. What Trump was specifically, specifically talking about was MS-13. Because the line that led up to this was a sheriff saying, we can't actually deport MS-13 people. The line leading up to this, there's a sheriff named Mims who said, thank you. There could be an MS-13 member I know about. If they don't reach a certain threshold, I cannot tell ICE about it. And then Trump responded to the MS-13 reference by saying, we have people coming into the country, but we're taking people out of the country. You wouldn't believe how bad these people are. These aren't people, these are animals. So how did the media cover this? He's specifically talking about MS-13. It is obvious that he's talking about MS-13. It is clear that he's talking about MS-13. MS-13's actual tagline, I mean, this is their actual marketing line to their own members, is rape, steal, control. These are not good people. They are, in fact, as close to animals as you will find in human beings. So how do the media report this? Let me show you how the media report this. Here's the New York Times. This is what they tweeted out. Trump lashed out at undocumented immigrants during a White House meeting, calling those trying to breach the country's borders animals. No, he didn't. He did not lash out at all illegal immigrants. He lashed out at MS-13, and they are animals. There have been several stories in the last couple of years about MS-13 members literally ripping hearts out of bodies while the people are still alive, beheading their political enemies, bringing drugs into the country. MS-13 are some of the worst people on planet Earth. If the, if the descriptor animal does not apply to MS-13, it legitimately applies to no one. And yet the media are trying to play it as though Trump is not talking about MS-13. Instead, Trump was talking about illegal immigrants at large. Now listen, Trump has said some bad stuff about illegal immigration generally. Now, he's been overbroad in his language, but that's not what happened here. What happened right here was that he was ripping on MS-13 and the media decided to deliberately take him out of context. And it wasn't just the New York Times. It was C-SPAN, it was CNN, it was the New York Times, it was the Washington Post. They all decided to report this as though Trump was talking about illegal immigrants more broadly. They were lying. They were lying. Okay, you can stop that there. <clears throat> All right, so there's Ben Shapiro with his response to the media very clearly and very intentionally taking this all out of context. Now, one of the things you might ask, you know, can our political leaders who, you know, they always pertain to be, you know, supposedly speaking about the truth and sharing facts with people. Let's hear what Speaker Pelosi had to say on this issue. But since you brought up the subject of immigration again, it reminds me that, and as I was talking about uh, the religious groups and how they're concerned about feeding the hungry and the gospel of Matthew and the rest, 41 million people in our country are food insecure. Uh, we believe, that some of us who are attracted to the political arena, uh, to government and public service, uh, that uh, we're all God's children. There's a spark of divinity in every person on earth and that we all have to recognize that as we respect the dignity and worth of every person and as we recognize our responsibilities with that spark of divinity within us. And so when the President of the United States says about undocumented immigrants, these aren't people, these are animals, you have to wonder, does he not believe in the spark of divinity, the dignity and worth of every person? These are not people, these are animals. The President of the United States. Every day that you think you've seen it all, along comes another manifestation of why their policies are so inhumane. All right, so there is uh, Speaker Pelosi with, as you already heard from the clip from Ben Shapiro, this is completely a false narrative. Completely false. Willing, willing, false, intentionally false, all for a political agenda. This is the kind of stuff that's absolutely nonsense in the news. And, <clears throat> you know, it's not just us saying this. Bring up the picture from the Associated Press, which is the Associated Press um, put out a retweet. They deleted their earlier tweet in the day and then put out this message uh, for everyone. And it reads... AP has deleted a tweet from late Wednesday on Trump's animals comment about immigrants because it wasn't made clear that he was speaking after a comment about gang members. 
So the Associated Press has the cojones to actually pony up, delete their previous thing and correct this and say, yeah, that was a misrepresentation of the facts. What do you think the chances are that Speaker Pelosi is going to stand up and apologize for her deliberately dishonest comment and say, you know, I was... Do you think she's even going to make the comment like, oh, I was mistaken? No, she's always she's above apologizing. She will never apologize to the people, ever, for anything that she does. She's just that way. So, so you I, want to make I, a I would, prediction that I'm gonna she's say not going to apologize? A zero. A big zero? Yeah. What, do you, what do you think, Kyle? <laughs> Well, with, you know, elections and stuff coming up and they have to gear towards that, right? Mm -hmm. She probably wants to make a clear image. So if she is proven wrong, I think it'd be in her best interest to say, hey, I'm sorry, you know. But Chris is saying there's zero chance that she'd apologize. She is. A, she has already been proven wrong, by the way. So that's clearly established. Listen, she is fighting to stay alive politically because most of the party wants to replace her. I mean, mm -hmm. that's very well known if you pay attention to politics right now mm -hmm. she is fighting she she wants to run for paul ryan's job mm -hmm. and uh she's not going to get it there's no way that her own party is going to support her unless she is the only person on there which sh she is similar to hillary clinton so i totally see her burning it down until she gets to be that person uh that they all get behind just like she did last time and quite frankly um, just about every time this woman opens her mouth, um, she creates just another example of a total embarrassment of American politics. She's a California puppet, is, is what I've been told. It's the, at the time when they brought her forward, you know, they brought forward a pretty face with somebody that would fight for their, uh, what they, they believe in, whether she knows anything about it or not. But, you know, she just represents a certain area of California, from what I understand. <laughs> so just moments ago... We had Jody Summers on talking about quality proteins versus what if her whole approach to health was the same approach as Nancy Pelosi's approach to politics? See, even Kel Burn Kearns says, if anything, Pelosi will double down on that rhetoric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. She'll just double down on the BS. He knows. He knows. <laughs> no, going, going back to this piece, what do you, what do you think? What do you think? Because Jody very successfully works with people and helping them solve health challenges. What do you think um, would happen if her approach to um, nutrition was the same as Pelosi's approach to politics? What do you think would happen? Oh, well, Pelosi would be much more effective. But if, what do you think she, would happen with Jody's health and with the people that oh, she if, works with if, if she treated oh, this gosh, health yeah, information the same all, way as Pelosi? all look like me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and be standing there going... I don't get it, Jody. I don't get it, Jody. I, you were, you were I've done almost everything you said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's hilarious, Chris. That's hilarious. So, yeah, that's, that's actually the truth, is that there is no truth when it comes to a lot of this stuff going on in the political see, uh, scene. And uh, it's pretty disgusting. You know, I'm, <laughs> my, hopper, my, my comprehension skills aren't... You know, terrible, but I mean, listening to the clip that you guys played for me, clearly you could understand that he was referencing the MS-13 gang members and not, I mean, I don't even remember hearing him use the words alien, Ill immigrant, or illegal immigrant or anything like that. He just said the people that we are deporting, and that could be any group of people. If he had any reason to doubt that, the entire, the entire roundtable conversation is on WhiteHouse.gov, the channel. And you can go there and listen to the entire thing, and you can listen to what the sheriff is sharing with him. The sheriff is very clearly stating that they're having a hard time getting these MS-13 gang members out, and they're they're keep they're continuing to come back into the system. But she is very clear. She uses the words very clearly, talking about gangs and specifically the MS-13 gang members. There's no question whatsoever what she's talking about. So anybody, Pelosi, uh, you know, uh, if she has anybody who, who attempts to even vet a story whatsoever, could have just said, hey, what was a, what, what did somebody say that he was answering the question to? You know, that was literally like, you know, 120 seconds worth of homework because you could have you rewound and gone, oh, that's what she asked. Any of the press could have done the same thing. This wasn't a mistake. 
No, no, they did this it on purpose. No, they did it on purpose. It, it just shows you the threshold of what they put into any of their work because they have no interest in what the truth actually is. Um, I think I heard somebody, and I don't know where I heard this today, but I think it's probably pretty accurate that the media is making Trump supporters out of people that usually hate him. Yeah, that's actually, you're hearing tons and tons where, of that. I don't know where I that, saw that. I, I picked up that little tidbit. There was something either written or said about that today in the news. Uh, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. No, I've heard the same thing is that. Um, did Did you tell me? Was it you? No, we watched the same video together. Oh, yeah. Ben Shapiro talked about it. Oh, it was Ben Shapiro. Yeah, okay. I knew I'd heard it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it is actually driving people into the Trump camp and that's why we're even seeing we're talking about we've talked about this in in previous shows why we're seeing uh so many people launch their own youtube channels and their own media and sharing from their own viewpoint because this whole nonsense that's coming from this extremist progressive left movement that's in this country and they're by for everybody's clarification this is a small little minority of people that are doing all of this but they are driving people out of the Democratic Party, and they're driving people away from who initially didn't like Trump, distrusted him on every level, and they're adding to the the people that are supporters of the president, not taking them away. So it's a it's a completely self defeating thing that they're doing anyway. So I'm sending you a link real quick, Kyle, that I want you to pop up here. This is a minute and thirty seconds. This actually comes from the White House uh, press secretary. Sarah Sanders. And so when Kyle gets a chance to bring this up, there was actually somebody in the Talking press about conference. The so this shows you how little these people actually put time into vetting their story out because this person is even dumb enough to ask the question at a White House press conference. Play this clip with uh, Sarah Sanders' response. Four hours. What did the president mean when he said that some immigrants are not people, they're animals? Uh, the president was very clearly referring to MS-13 gang members who <clears throat> enter the country illegally and whose deportations are hamstrung by our laws. Uh, this is one of the most vicious and deadly gangs that operates by the motto of rape, control, and kill. If the media and liberals want to defend MS-13, they're more than welcome to. Uh, frankly, I don't think the term that the president used was strong enough. MS-13 has done heinous acts. Uh, it took an animal to stab a man a hundred times and decapitate him and rip his heart out. It took an animal to beat a woman they were sex trafficking with a bat 28 times, indenting part of her body. And it took an animal to kidnap, drug, and rape a 14-year-old Houston girl. Frankly, I think that the term animal doesn't go far enough, and I think that the president should continue to use his platform and everything he can do under the law to stop these types of horrible... Okay, so there's Sarah Sanders' uh, response to this stupid question from a reporter that all he had to do was just go watch the 120 well, seconds. Well, I, I, I can't Trump's even comment. believe that, that we have to have this discussion. Yeah. It, you know, I, I can't even believe that she had to answer that. I mean, I've been, I would have That's been like, what I'm saying. First of all, if you listen to his question, he, he didn't even ask it right. You know, if, if I remember, what, what did what did President Trump mean when he was referring to immigrants who cross our borders? That's not what he, as, that's not what President Trump was referring to. Yeah, he, he, he knows said it. the people that we are deporting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and we all know that we are deporting the bad people. Nobody's exactly. questioning that. Okay. Yeah, there might be a few good ones that are getting deported, but you know what? Again, they should have followed our rules and our laws, and they wouldn't be getting deported right now. They'd be nice and toasty, and warm in their house, doing whatever it is that they do. But no, that's not who you know he was referring to, and he, they they just this is what you call hatchet piece, man. He he he. The reporter knew it. His uh, network knew it. All of the networks that posted this knew it. It was completely for political reasons that they did this. the The interesting part is that on this issue, they're busted red-handed. What we see every single day are issues on different levels that it's harder to prove exactly what they're up to. On this issue, is no problem whatsoever, because uh, now put up the photo that I found. Oh yeah, this is this is good. I mean, this is something that you know because we started looking at this last night. You yep. Know? And uh, so I woke up this morning to this photo here. 
wherever it's at. No. Yeah, here we go. Uh, this is USA Today. This is this is it. Donald Trump is right. MS-13 members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go up there to animals. the headline. This is we want the headline. We can, oh, it's not. Yeah, that's all we got. That's all we got. But anyway, USA Today. Scroll on down so we can read the comment for people here. Just because President Trump attacked immigrants in the past is no reason to condemn him today. He told the truth about immigrant gang MS-13. They are animals. Reported by USA Today. Fantastic job, guys. That's exactly yeah. what you need to do. Well, it was an opinion piece, but you know, either yeah. way, they, they printed it, which is they printed something positive for Donald Trump. I'm sure that they're probably being boycotted by now, you know, for something. <laughs> for, for speaking you know, the truth. For speaking the truth. But, you know, I mean, it, it was pretty clear. I mean, even a small child could have seen that he was talking about the bad guys that we were deporting. Caleb Howell was the journalist on that uh, opinion piece. And well done, Caleb. You showed all the news networks how to actually report news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well done. Just when all the other news agencies are going another way and this big news agency goes the accurate way, you know, I take notice. There's another story which we'll cover on another day. But, you know, it's really, really funny is when we've shared these pieces about all these uh, major news networks and, and how they... Um, all, they're all like singing off the same sheet of music and how we've shared that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a gentleman who is inducted into the Broadcasters Hall of Fame, essentially, but a guy who is behind the scenes who has started and founded many of these various networks. And uh, even the likes of Bill Gates is connected to some of our big major news networks. You know where, where uh, MSNBC came from? You know what the MS stands for in the front? Mm. Mainstream. You know what the connection is? There's another MS that's Microsoft. NBC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Microsoft pumped $200 million, which was half of the money up front to launch MSNBC, and then shared in the expense of the other $200 million that it took to put the whole... I, I have to interrupt working. you, and I have to, I have to bring up something I find very interesting. You know, this morning we had another shooting in a school yes. in Texas. Let's visit about that. A, a about three minutes ago, I have to interrupt because it's breaking news. Yep. But uh, what we got here is K two is now reporting that a school in Lebanon, Oregon, is on lockdown after reports of someone with a gun. Please say there has been no shooting reported. At this mm -hmm. time, so the school is on lockdown. So that's two schools in one day that have reports of guns uh, in them. Now we don't know anything about this second one, but we know a lot about the first one. Uh, but I just find it very interesting that it happens on the same day, two schools, different states. You know, here's the, here's the other thing, is that we had conversation. There is a by the way, there is a resource officer available at this. Uh, school, this Texas school yeah, that this I took place. I think he got shot, but I'm not sure. <laughs> he is. He is one. He was it, there in the reports that I read about this. He was one yeah. of the people that was wounded in this. Yeah, and you know what the liberals and I'm sorry, but it's true. The liberals and and the people on the left today are saying is, see, it doesn't do any good to have a, a resource officer with a gun in the school. I'm just like going. There's a he got shot. He there's, got, there's a cut, yeah. He's doing his some job. Slag. He did his job. He took a bullet. What more do you want? Yeah. <laughs> but I would say this: if I was putting together a not even a school, if I was putting together an encampment that had this number of people, and my responsibility is the security and safety of the occupants, do I have one person there? Ensuring no, the safety and security. No, and that, that, was, that, was, that was actually talked about and brought up today, you know, because these whiners are already saying, well, see, it didn't do you guys any good. Well, this guy was out in the open, and everybody knew he was a resource officer, and everybody knew he had a gun. So now the conversation is, do we have, need to have multiple of these guys, one where they are known, and a couple maybe where they aren't known. And, I, I think uh, teachers being armed in the school is brilliant. We talked about that uh, at the uh, stand for the second I, rally. That I was do, here too, but, you know. I, we, we have a school teacher who's actually running for elected office here in the state of Washington who responded to Governor I, Inslee and said, I'm a biology teacher because Inslee said that bio, he talked to biology teachers and he talked to uh, grade school 
teachers, kindergarten teachers, and by no percentage would any teacher be interested in carrying a uh, weapon in school. And a biology teacher is running for state representative. Um, that's Joel McIntyre, and he responded directly to Governor Inslee by saying, here I am, Governor. I'm the first one, and there's many others that he's talked to is in his own school who said yeah, right. they'd be willing to do the same. And he goes, and if this percentage exists in my school, I'm guessing the percentage exists yeah, in I, every hey, school. Listen, I can tell you right now, without a shadow of a doubt, that I know several teachers. And when I say several, I mean more than like what I am holding up right now. Mm -hmm. like quite a bit more they have to leave their guns in their car mm -hmm. and they aren't even supposed to leave them in their car because it's you know not it's it's against the law we are gun free zones in our schools and yep. that's why the schools keep getting shot up is because they're gun free zones nobody has any guns but these guys have to leave their guns in their car and then they can't tell anybody about their guns being in their car because they'll get fired there was a there was an actual situation in minnesota where a school teacher um, I believe he was a vice principal, possibly, um, but there was a um, member of the staff, let's just say that, in one of the schools in Minnesota where a gun threat uh, was had in the school, a shooter entered the school that, I, like I said, I think it was a, an assistant principal or vice principal, ran out the back door of the school to his vehicle, retrieved his weapon, returned back to the school, and uh, engaged the shooter and guys out of the building. Now, I don't remember if the shooter ended up getting shot or whatever else, but it was one of the pieces uh, not put in the news because they're not interested in. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle threw up some good information right here. And, you know, it, this this is something this this is something that is not normal. I mean, these guys went in with guns, pipe bombs, all kinds of explosives, pressure, pressure, pipe, pressure bombs. pipe bombs. So this this was Okay, I'm going to go out there on a limb, and I'm, I'm not a police officer either, but, you know, for all of this stuff to happen, that can't be the work of just one person. It's not at all. There, there's right. actually already reports of an accomplice, a second person that was involved in this uh, So deal. if there's two, there possibly could be another one. So we're up to conspiracy level here. So I'm wondering what these guys were doing, what they, what they were thinking. By the way, you guys, I have maybe sent you some of the links, but we are going to prove... With the assistance of the Broward County Sheriff, his own testimony, and the all the calls made by the police officers directly on the scenes, that there were multiple shooters in um, Broward County when the shooting happened down in Florida. Mm. Well, this one's really. I, I there's some things in here that really stand out in my mind. First of all, and uh, Kyle just highlighted those. We talked about this before the show too, and this is something that really sends off alarms to me. Is that these guys did this with a shotgun. Mm -hmm. Now, dear media, when we're if we're going to talk about the shootings all day long, please put people on there that know any things about guns, not people who think they know things about guns. Get a gun expert. Enough mm -hmm. of the misinformation on the guns because we have people on there saying, "Well, shotguns are used mainly for hunting." No, no, shotguns are not mainly used for hunting. They're used for home protection. Mm -hmm. That is one of the favorites that people use for home protection. And like Kyle pointed out, trap shooting, clay pigeon shooting, all those things. Those are what they're mainly used for, duck hunting. Yeah. But you can Maybe. actually buy a pistol grip shotgun. Yes, which you can. Is An assault just complete, shotgun. It's, yeah, it's completely and, but a that's, home defense that's weapon. That's home defense. And it's a modern firearm. It's not even an assault. You know, it's not even yeah. assault. So, I mean, the only people who get to assault, own assault rifles in this nation are police officers and people that go through very very expensive permitting process to the point where they've made it unaffordable for the average citizen to own a, these assault weapons that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. The only people who have them are the military, police officers. Sometimes maybe you'll find a bounty hunter that may have acquired one somewhere somehow. But, you know, what I'm saying is that these, the, you know, this attack today with the shotgun is, is very, I find it very odd, mm -hmm. very, very odd at the weapon of choice. Well, Again, a very unfortunate, outrageous situation. Somebody shooting in a school. Part of where this whole situation really ticks me off beyond the tra obvious tragedy that it is. What really ticks me off is that the solution to end this immediately is already deployed in multiple venues. Every day, every city, every state, all around our country, 
And there's tons of people that the general public doesn't like, like judges, lawyers, lawmakers, congressmen, senators, you, you name it. And uh, you never hear about a gun tragedy happening in any of those situations because they have secured point of entry and good guys with guns. Well, I would like I would like to say that I noticed that I think I and I'm again, I read a lot of stuff and I take in a lot of information, but I think I read somewhere along the lines that Democratic candidates have made some type of statement that they will not allow their security people to have guns during this next election. I'll see if I can track that down and find that out. But that's not something you really want to announce to people. <laughs> you know, you, you want to keep those kind of things quiet and then talk about it after the election. <laughs> They're actually going to pretend like they don't want armed security. Yes. Yep. You know what? You, you know, the organizations, because if I can are find the loudest that. against, um, you know, the, the loudest um, gun control advocates, what I want to see happen is I want to see the Golden Globes, the Oscars, like all of those types of events that are gatherings for celebrities. I want to see them get rid of all of their security there. I, I want to see them have the same security that the schools have. Exactly the same. And all of these stars that are out with their get rid of all of it, have the same security that these school kids have. As long as people are thinking that, um, that there's a so-called law that prevents uh, a, a bad person from going into a school to do a shooting, well, then that same law protects the celebrities, protects the lawmakers, protects the judges, protects the lawyers, protects everybody. Uh, there's, there's no reason whatsoever to have security anywhere if we don't have security in our schools. None whatsoever. If, if you're going to argue that secure point of entry and good guys with guns on the inside is not a solution for schools. Yank it out of every place you have it, everywhere around the country, and you're going to th see things change, not only in our courts and in our our um, um, legislative buildings and that sort of thing, but you're going to see things change at football games and baseball games and basketball games and all of them. Get rid of the security. Get rid of the uh, secured point of entry and get rid of good guys with guns on the inside and every other venue if you think they should not belong in schools. Even bars and pubs have bouncers. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes, but I don't believe they get guns. Well, so that's my whole point with this. You, you, there's no argument, no justification whatsoever that school shouldn't be immediately putting into place secured point of entry and good guys with guns on the inside. And I can tell you right now that one of the one of the very bad pieces of legislation that we have had our 19th district representatives and our senators voting against with the lone exception of Jim Walsh that they've been voting against is freeing up this, I believe it's $31 million or could be $40 million somewhere in that neighborhood, but of money for resource officers for students right here in school and get the ball moving in that direction. And they're doing it again entirely for political purposes. And completely then, wrong they just needed like a couple more votes on yes just to pass it mm -hmm. they're so close all right what do we have on local news we're running out of time here guys well i before we get to that i'd like to say happy birthday to my grandpa mm -hmm. um my grandfather who lives in utah he actually watches the show regularly so if he's not watching it live right now what's then his name <laughs> Stan. Stan. And we Stan just call him, it's just your call him Grandpa. <laughs> Called him Grandpa my entire life. Grandpa Stan, it's your birthday. Happy birthday from everybody here at Northwest Judicial News. Look, I even have a cake. Yeah. Aw. So I, I, we just celebrated this past weekend my Aunt Thelma's birthday, who's over on the Oregon side, and she turned 90 on the 14th. Wow. And her husband, Ray, turned 96 that previous uh, year we were out there. So he's he's gonna have Mr. 97 coming up in the not distant future. So you know what's interesting is we were talking earlier with Jody Summers about good quality proteins, wild caught fish, range chickens, grass fed beef. Well, for years they had grass fed beef in their farm in the lowlands there. Uh, Ray was a long time commercial fisherman and caught wild caught salmon fish all the time. <laughs> Yeah, they've had a 
you can talk about genetics and everything else that you want, but eating the right foods definitely makes a huge difference. And uh, they're perfect examples of that. Do All right, uh, just the last couple of things that I'm going to mention. The YMCA Summer Day Camps, if you're interested in getting out and doing some camping, they start on June 18th. They run all the way through the summer. Last camp ends on August 24th, but they're every single week. There's nine weeks of camps starting on June 18th. Get over there and get signed up. We will be out, North West Digital News will, for the one that's between July 9th and the 13th. That's their Hollywood movie week. We're going to go out and record uh, some of these movie acts that they're going to be doing with us. Uh, so, and I understand that it's around the theme of uh, Jurassic Park. So Kyle just put a video into the um, link here on the live stream so you can check that out and uh, watch that. Uh, fantastic. And then also coming up, this is kind of a, a local little surprise for um, a, our local groups of pirates, but over in... Uh, Westport will be the Rusty Scuppers Pirate Days. That's June 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And, um, all right, I'm just going to blow the cover. There's going to be actually a really cool watercraft that's going to show up over there for the <laughs> R Pirates. Can you put this Sponsored up by Northwest Digital News um, for Rusty Scuppers Day. So it will be included in the I do have one skirmishes. last piece of local news here. Oh, okay. Uh, we do have a missing reports person to post. Apparently, he's wanted in questioning for, uh, a, 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 the head tax. Oh. Uh, nobody can seem to find this guy. Uh, we're going to throw the picture up. So if you see this guy, let him know that he's being wanted to uh, talk about the head tax. He has been absolutely silent. Oh, so it cannot be found. And it seems uh, this missing person... Jay Inslee, he looks rem remotely familiar, says, uh, Governor Washington State. Uh, <laughs> hey, let me zoom in real quick so you can... <laughs> yeah, so you can get a better look here. If you uh, see this guy, be sure to call the numbers on the bottom. Yeah, and if you happen to see uh, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, or Bob Ferguson, he could be somewhere within the vicinity of them. And the last scene in Washington, D.C., schmoozing with... Liberal donors. And by the way, I, I happen to know if for 100% positive that number on the left is his office phone number. <laughs> okay. I know. I've called. Uh, the one on the right, I'm not too sure what that is. But, you know, call either number. Call the other number um, if you happen to know where this gentleman is. Um, they would wish to question him about the head tax. Yeah, there's a big theft in Seattle, you know, from the citizens, a whole bunch of money is going to be Millions. taken from people, and they're kind of curious on, on how our governor It's kind of the Robin Hood thing, yeah. you know, yeah. you'd like steal from one person and give yeah. it to another. Yeah. And, and So if you see him, you know, let him know he's being sought out for questioning. All right, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> philosophy. Yeah, philosophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're implementing new philosophies uh, in Seattle, and they would like to talk to Mr. Jay Inslee about the philosophy. Yeah, and we'll talk about this on our next pest conference, too. Yeah, so, our next I mean... pest conference, yes. <laughs> All right. Great. A Freudian slip leads to a new term. Yep. Pest conferences. Yep. <laughs> All right, we'll have to tag Sarah Sanders or the yes, White House on yes, it. Yes, absolutely. And let them know that uh, we, we have coined a new term for them to use. Oh, yeah, we should probably put this on uh, Jay Inslee's Facebook so people know that he's missing. Yeah. That might be yeah, able to be yeah, arranged. Yeah, yeah. It'd be good if family and friends would know that. By the yeah. way, you can now post as, as, you know, a group page or group or page page. So you could actually post that as Northwest Digital News on his page. And then nobody would know it was you, Kyle. Nobody. And if you'd like or if you're actually, a viewer, we, you we can also share no, it there. No. We, we know it's him. <laughs> and everybody watching knows it's him. But he could do it anyway. If I oh. do this, I disappear, though. Right. <laughs> 